Yo, um, first of all, this is this is pretty crazy. I never started this channel to be anything other than just like a platform to show my friends and like a couple of my family members the climbing that I that I do. But the fact that now we're like over a thousand and it's just growing every day, it's like, whoa, this actually might become something. So that's um, super cool. So um, first of all, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, for all you guys' support. It actually means the world to me. And I, I don't know, I, I, I'm thinking more and more about this channel and I really do feel like we can grow it to a channel that has 100,000 or more subscribers and I can make a living from this. And I can just make videos of me climbing and going around doing alpine adventures and ice climbing and rock climbing. And so, yeah, I don't know, that's, that's pretty cool, guys. So, uh, first of all, thank you so much for that. Um, that's awesome. So, uh, for a special video for 1,000 subscribers, I wanted to make a video. There was a couple comments, because I, I put out a poll to see what you guys wanted. And a few people were like, well, do something like suffering, do something gnarly. I'm like, kind of like, wow, well, we do that all the time. Like, I don't know. Like, that's, that's what the channel is, basically. So... I am going to show you my entire climbing system from, and I have it out there like a crazy person uh, is strewn out all over the room. Uh, basically from the boot socks all the way up to the head, I'm gonna show you what I use for layering, what tools I'm using, what gear I'm using, why I use it, everything you could possibly know about my system. I have probably 100 plus days out on ice over the last three, four years, maybe more actually come to think about it. So I feel like I've been able to develop a system that works for me. It might not work for you. Some of the things you can't even buy anymore, so I apologize, but maybe there's there's uh, an equivalent that you can buy. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go grab some stuff and then we're gonna we're gonna go. <coughs> okay. <laughs> okay. First off, um, my sock system. Ninety percent of the time, I'll be wearing these smart wool socks. Um, you can buy these, I don't know, anywhere. You can buy these anywhere. Uh, uh, yeah, basically, doesn't matter. If it's minus 10, I'll wear these. If it's minus 30, I'll wear these. Um, I do have another thinner pair that I wear if it's like minus five and above, but most of the time I'm wearing these. Now, this is a secret, okay? And I learned this um, on long days with a lot of walking. So two things, number one, if you're doing a ton of walking and you get blisters, this is like a thin pair of liner socks. They're tiny little blue socks. You put these under your wool socks. That makes a huge difference, not only for like blisters and sore feet, but warmth as well, because these are able to just breathe a little bit better. So if it's like, I don't know, if it's like minus 15 and colder, I'll be wearing these and these. That's my uh, sock system. Okay, <laughs> boots. I've been using uh, these Scarpa Phantom Techs for a couple years now. They're phenomenal. Uh, what I would say about boots is buy, buy whatever pair fits you, but make sure, when I first started ice climbing, the guy at the store was like, you need to get them big enough so that your feet never hit the toe. And so I'd be banging against the side of this steel column and he'd be like, do you feel it? And I was like, well, yeah, a little bit. He's like, go a size up, go a size up. I think I ended up getting a 43 and a half in, uh, I think at the time I was doing the last Pertiva G5s. And I had so much heel lift in those that I had to crank them down so tight that I actually broke the BOA system on that pair. Um, and then when I went to the Phantom Tex, I originally got a 42 and a half. And then I actually went down, this is a 42. So can you think about that actually? Like, so I was wearing a 43 and a half and I'm down to a 42. You don't, here's the thing, unless you're a brand new ice climber and you're smashing your feet into the ice, you don't need to make these so loose that if you touch the ice, you're gonna feel your toe hitting, hitting this front part here. I would way rather have them super tight, locked in, no heel lift, and just be super delicate on the ice than have it, like I'm not smashing my way up the ice, like I'm not trying to like put my foot through the waterfall. Um, so I love the Phantom Text, I'd love to try the new, my buddy has, Matt, he's got the Las Pativa G5 Evos with the boa. Yeah, those look, what's up, dude? Those look money. What's up, dude? You wanna say hi to the camera? Hey, what's up, dude? You gonna hang out while I, while I film this? I love this cat. Um, okay, that's boots. Okay, I can't fit everything in here. We're, we're cramped into my gear closet right now, so um, I gotta get things and then come back and then bring it here, so now. Yo, pick either in or out, man. You gotta pick some. Okay, so let's talk. Let's talk layering, okay? Um, minus ten and below. I'm gonna be wearing. First of all, this is just like a regular base layer, bottom base layer. 
this is super easy. Then on top of that, I will wear, this is just a pair of like Lululemon sweatpants. And you're thinking, well, do you climb in sweatpants? No, and I'll show you this in a second, but this is the bottom basically. So minus 10 and below, I'll do the uh, base layer and then I'll do the sweatpants. Minus 10 and above, I do just the sweatpants because it gets a little hot. Uh, that's for the bottom, for the top. Who's calling me? Hang on, who's calling me? Who's calling, who's calling? Mama. Your park pass has expired. <laughs> Why do you say that? I was watching your video. It yeah. is eleven twenty-one. What the YouTube video? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta. I gotta renew that. I gotta get a new one here. So you should get you a, a new one and then yeah. have it on the video. So I know. know that, you, that we that I know. buy a, a park pass for sure. Like they haven't <laughs> taken enough of my money yet. Yeah. Can I? Can I call you back? I'm actually. I'm just shooting a video right now. Okay. Bye. Okay. Okay. Bye. bye. Park pass. Two people have said that already. <laughs> okay, for, for base layers up, I have been using, and I don't know the names of these. These are both Pan uh, Patagonia, pardon me. So this one is just like a light base layer with the hood. I wear this in. This is usually my system for like 99% of the, the climbs that I do. If it's incredibly short, and I mean like walk up to it, like GBU, like 10 minutes, um, I'll just wear this, but what's up, dude? <laughs> But if it's uh, long at all, I sweat and I just like to change my base layer. So I change into uh, a combination. I have a few other ones, but this is the main one that I use. Again, this is Patagonia. This is just a little bit thicker. This is like a mid-weight base layer. I love using this. It's got the hood as well. So really cold. You can use that. Okay. Now you're wondering, what do I do with the sweatpants? I will show you. Before we talk about the Gore-Tex, which I wear all the time, uh, let's talk about base layers. So this is a Patagonia Nano Air, I believe. I wear this minus 15. Dude, you gotta come in or out. I wear this minus 15 and I would say, you know what, let's say, I would say minus, minus 15 and warmer, or if I'm like acclimatized to winter, I might go down to minus 20. If it's colder than that, then I'm wearing uh, this. And this, I believe, is the Arcteryx Atom. I believe and it's just a little bit thicker I enjoy this yeah it's kind of I sweat a lot in it because it's so hot so it's kind of hard to to wear in but it's super warm so I really like this one now I've been trying this actually quite a bit lately and I've really enjoyed it is I wear and I've been wearing this for years now and I love this thing uh, to pieces this is the Arcteryx Alpha SV bibs these are like armor. These things are the most awesome piece of equipment that Arcteryx has ever made. They're waterproof. They keep you so warm. It's all the way up, like it's like a full, full bib. Um, I love this more than anything. I've had it for now like two and a half years, so the Gore-Tex is absolutely shot. And Arcteryx, those motherfuckers, um, <laughs> the new Alpha SV bibs that they came up with do not have this top portion with these two pockets. And I use those two pockets for my batteries because I keep literally 10 batteries in this one pocket because batteries for the GoPro die so bad. And I'll actually make another video for that about how I even make these videos in the winter because it's, it's not easy. So I will wear a combination of the sweatpants, the base layer, um, the base layer for the pants, base layer for the top, um, a mid layer, and then I'll walk in with that. And I found that to be really awesome. And then when I get there, that's when I put my hard shell top on and I change out the base layer. I have a fresh base layer on at that point. Um, I probably saw the mid layer on, maybe, maybe not depending on how cold it is. And then I put on and I put this in my backpack on the way in. I don't wear it on the way in and I put it on and it's awesome. It's super warm. There's no sweat on it. It's brand new. This is the Arcteryx um, Alpha FL. Yeah, fast, fast and light. I really like this one over the SV. The SV just seems like really boxy. Like I tried it on and I was, I was gonna buy it, but it was just like, it felt like there was too much space. So this is a little bit more trim. I really do like this jacket. That's my, my layering system, except for one thing. Let me show you one more thing. Every single time I walk out of the gear room and then I walk back in, meow meow, oh, <laughs> he runs out of the gear room and then he runs back in. This is, uh, this is, hang on, come here. This is Meow Meow, by the way. His full name is Detective Meow Meow. 
He's got a sister as well, who's downstairs. Hey, dude. She doesn't want to be part of the video. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Mm, I love this cat. Um, okay, let's talk puffies. I love, I love puffies. Um, they keep you warm. Uh, they make sure you don't freeze most of the time. I don't even know what this one is. This is a mammoth. I don't even know. Mammoth something. I basically wear this jacket minus 10 and warmer with an asterisk by it. I'm going to put an asterisk by it because there's a funny story, actually. Maybe I'll, I'll tell you guys another time uh, about when we did Sea of Vapors with Staz. And I thought that wearing this would be a good idea because it was only minus 10. But what I failed to look at was that it was minus 10 way up on a north face on a head wall with spin drift, blowing wind. Long story short, I got frostbite in like four fingers. The zipper on this actually broke, which is why you see this Scarpa zipper tag on it now. Um, it broke and this thing was just flapping around in the wind for like 12 hours. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, remind me to tell you guys that story another time because it's a hilarious story. Um, but this, yeah, so basically this is like minus 10 and below with the, the asterisk that it's a route that I know that we're going to be quick on. It's not on a north base, you know, routes like Professor Falls, uh, Guinness Gully, like, like things that you're constantly moving in and it's light, quick, puffy to throw on. That's this one. Now, this right here is the Patagonia Great, and I'm realizing that I love Patagonia apparently. This is the Patagonia Great 7 Puffy. This thing is a monster. This is getting a little old now. I think it's like four years old, but this thing is so awesome. It's kept me so warm. Um, it's basically like a huge sleeping bag that goes around you. It's a little bit expensive. I think they, they retail at like $1,200, but it's 100% worth it. I can certify that, uh, that you stay very warm in this puffy. Okay, uh, let's go to, I guess, a bunch of little gear things that I use. Yum meow. Come on, dude. Come on, I know you're gonna come back in. Come on, shut the door. And then I know you're gonna come back in. <laughs> exactly, come on, dude. Pick what you wanna do. <laughs> this cat. <sighs> I'm gonna tell you right now. The Arcteryx FL backpack. I'm addicted to this backpack. Um, I have a ton of backpacks down here. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. I have 10 backpacks down here and they probably will never leave my closet because this backpack, in my opinion, is the best ice climbing backpack you can possibly buy. This is the new uh, 30 liter Arcteryx FL. Um, the old one that was a 30 liter, which I also have here, um, and I still do use occasionally, but it's just not quite, it's not actually 30 liters, it's like I think 22 liters or something like that, and then with the stuff sack, maybe it is. This is actual, a true 30 liters, and I use this thing obsessively. So I put all my gear into this, this is a phenomenal backpack, and then this is a little blue ice, I think 12 liter or 14 liter. This is just my lead pack. So I chuck my puffy, some snacks, my gloves, and then when I just climb, I use this, but I carry everything in with the Alpha FL. Let's talk about uh, my, my mess of a harness. This is the Arcteryx harness. I, I think they only make one. I know one of them has adjustable straps and one doesn't. This one has adjustable leg straps. I have four DMM ice clippers on this, which is ridiculous because they're $50 an ice clipper. So this is like, $500 of gear just sitting here. I also have, uh, this is the Petzl um, extendable personal anchor system. And I love this personal anchor system. I just started using it this year. And so it's got a few things. So the first thing it's got is what I do is this short one is my dedicated rappel line. So basically I always keep this verso. And there was a comment actually on one of the videos or somewhere. And some guy was asking me why I have this always there. And then I also have a reverso. It's because this is always there. If for some reason I drop it while I'm putting the rope in it, I can easily grab my reverso. It's my backup. It's there. I've done that before. I've actually dropped my reverso when I was repelling. I had to repel off like two beaners and it's very unpleasant. I'll, I'll give you guys that. So this is just my backup that I have. And then this extendable anchor is awesome. The fact that you can just very quickly extend it shorten it. This is one of the coolest things that I've been using. I really, really, really love it. I can't say enough good things about it. It makes 
climbing and rappelling and anchors and everything super easy. So that's that. What else can I tell you about this harness? That's really about it. Besides the fact this is like, like probably like a pound and Staz would, would die if he had to carry this. He's very weight conscious. Um, this thing weighs a ton. The DMM ice clippers are definitely a little overkill, but I will never drop a screw or a tool. And so I think, well, that's probably good. And they're always locked in. They never flip over each other. They're always in the exact same spot. I really like them, but they are heavy. So there's some downsides. So that's my harness situation. Let's talk some random things here. Um, this is the Alto Gear um, pouch. Um, 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 what's his name? I just forgot his name. Tim Banfield. Oh my God. Tim Banfield and a company down, I think they're in Colorado. They created this. I don't, I don't mind it. It's actually, I'll, I'll show you guys here. It's basically, so what I do like about it is the thing is, is massive. Like you can fit, I think 14 screws in it. Like this thing is huge. You could put, you could put every screw that you're using in there. The thing that I don't like about it is you won't really be able to notice now, but when it gets cold, this fabric will kind of like take on a shape and it'll stay in that shape. So and then at the end of the day, when you go to put your screws back in, it just seems like they catch on the inside quite a bit compared to, uh, this is the black diamond one. Uh, it just seems like they, they catch a lot more than, than this one or a few other brands will. But I do like the fact that it's massive and you can fit all your screws in it. Um, I'm using, the Petzl laser speeds. I'd love to get the like ultralight laser speeds. By the way, um, <laughs> I we've been trying to make this video for not this specific video, but a video about this screw sharpening for since the beginning of the season. So I got my screw sharpened uh, by a guy named Charles in Quebec. I sent them all in. The guy's awesome. He did a, a super awesome job. Um, and he asked me if I would do a shout out on my channel to tell you guys about it. And I was like, yeah, for sure, no problem. And then every single time that we went to go uh, shoot it and be like, look how good it goes in the ice. If something happened, like we bailed on the day or we didn't finish the climb or my batteries died. Like, I think we recorded the same video three times and just never, or the footage. Yeah, that's another thing. The footage got corrupt on one climb, couldn't even use it. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been an uphill battle. But if you guys need screw sharpening, um, Charles out of Quebec, and I can't remember what his company's called. Maybe I'll put it in the description um, and, I'll, and I'll ask him what it's called. I, it was super cheap. I think it was like, depending on how many you send in, I think it was like nine bucks a screw or something like that. So this was, um, this was awesome. So thank you, Charles, if you're watching this. That's screws. I don't know how much I can say about this. These are the draws that I'm using. They're heavy. I don't like them. It's just what I have. Don't worry about those. Here's some random things. Reverso. Don't worry about that. Let's talk gloves. Gloves are important. Stay there. Okay. Yo, here is the glove system. Now, now, what's up, dude? Okay, this is this is basically what I have, and a few, uh, few different methods of of wearing them. But I have basically three gloves. I have my approach gloves, I have climbing gloves, and I have belay gloves. So I have been using in like minus seven and warmer. I think these are the OR, the OR. Storm trackers. <laughs> These are the OR storm trackers. They're pretty light. It's like minus five, minus seven, somewhere around there. Approach gloves. These are fine. And if it is minus five or minus seven, then I will be using these. These are the black diamond belay gloves of sorts. I don't even know the name of these, um, but if it's if it's that warm, I'll wear these as a belay glove. If it's minus seven and colder, these become the approach gloves, and these become the belay gloves. These are the OR Ultimates. These things are ridiculous. I'll show you these. Yeah. <laughs> meow meow. Come here. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? What's up, dude? Um, these things are super warm. They're awesome. The only downside is I wish I would have gotten a small, but I got a medium. Um, they're just a little bit big but hopefully I can change that next year. These things have kept me super warm. I love these. Or Ultimates, very sweet. Let's talk uh, climbing gloves, lead gloves or climbing gloves. I have basically two pairs that I wear all the time because I just love them so much. I've tried a few other pairs um, and if you've seen in my other videos, you'll see me complaining about other gloves and I don't know why I ever try and change the glove system. These, I actually have been wearing these. These are touted as like a mixed glove 
or like a summer glove. These are the OR mix a lots, but I've actually been using these in like minus five to minus 10 conditions. And my hands have been staying pretty warm. And I think it's because they're so thin that I'm barely gripping my tool that it's like, I'm never, I'm never over squeezing and, and, and getting cold. Um, with that, there's obviously exceptions, but for the most part, these have been really good. Minus five, maybe minus 10 if it's not too windy. These are awesome. But then these are my go-to gloves. These things are the best in my opinion. And I wish they would pay me some kind of money to tell the entire world that these are the best ice climbing gloves, uh, but they don't, but that's okay. Maybe send me a few more pairs, Outdoor Design, if you're watching this, that would be awesome. Um, these gloves are the best. I just, I, I love them so much. These are the Outdoor Design Diablo Tex. I have a few pairs of them. I can't say enough good things about them for climbing. You guys ask me a lot of the time what my favorite glove or what glove I'm using and what's my favorite. These right here, these are, these are the best, like, Minus five, minus 10. I've climbed minus 20, minus 25 in these and my hands have stayed really, really warm. It's like the perfect mixture of insulation on the inside of these gloves where it actually keeps your hands warm, uh, but, but it's not so thick that you can't feel the tool and you're over gripping and then you, you that's when you get the bar freeze and that's when your hands freeze is when you're over gripping the tool. So these gloves um, are the best. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to show you? Stay there. Got a couple more things. Few, few random things. Um, if you guys care to know, I'm using the BD. I think it's called the BD Vapor Helmet. I don't mind it. It's, um, you know, it's it's not a bad helmet. I put my GoPro mount on it, so now I'm pretty much destined for it for the next little while because the mount's actually kind of difficult to put on. So now that it's on there, it's on. This, <laughs> this is uh my little uh safety bag. I basically carry this thing with me all the time and it's got a few things so let's go through it so headlamp that's important i have a little first aid bag that's important in reach device um this is also super important and of course i have a little thermometer on it so i can actually see how cold it is when we're out there yeah this is important i don't know what else to say about it tp hand sanitizer very important and then basically just a few things. So three Allen keys. These are just used for tools, crampons. That's about it. A spare bale. This is actually really important because I've had mine break off before. Staz has had, had, had his, pardon me, broken off before. This will ruin your day if you don't have it. You can climb with quite a lot of things, with missing a lot of things. If you don't have crampons, you can't climb usually. Spare bail, important. Lip chap, lighter. That's it. Um, okay, let's talk uh, crampons and tools. I've been using the Petzl darts, the new ones, with the Krukenogi front points, and I love these. These are awesome. I don't know what else to say. You can put them in dual, and I used to climb ice on duels, but this season I actually switched to monos because I found I was doing a lot more mixed climbing, and I wanted to at least be able to know how to climb on ice with mono. So if you do a hard mix line and then you traverse onto hard ice, you're not like, how the hell do I climb on ice with monos? Uh, and I actually, now I just kind of love monos. I don't know, I, I find them great. I find them as secure, if not more secure than duels. So I've been doing that for a long time or for this year, at least. I really like them. The Krukenogi front points, these are awesome. These are game changer. I recommend them. They're sweet. For tools, uh, I have been using the Nomix basically since I started. So these are the PS double zero A's. You guys are always asking me what it is. I don't know, it's just letters. I know they're the double zeros. These are the Krukenogi double zeros. Um, they are awesome as long as you don't hit rock. They're still a really good uh, uh, pick if you hit rock. They're just not quite the same. When these things are brand new, they're just like, they're like, Nyah. they're phenomenal. I tape my tool because I love to bite it. And then of course, you guys have asked me this before, what is this? I made a little short for this webbing. What is this webbing? It's just so I have something that's rated for more than this tiny pommel that I can clip into and I can use my tools as a personal anchor. I love the Nomex, although I've been looking for something that's a little more uh, aggressive, technical. So I've borrowed these from a friend, the Xtremes. And I made a big post um, on one of the posts that I did. I put a comment on my experience with them. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, I, I need more testing. I need more testing. They feel, they feel good, but something feels just different. But I, I think I just need to do a little bit more testing with them. And, and I think I can get used to them. And I think I actually really like them. So I don't want to give any review on these yet because I'm not 100% sure. So get in there. Yeah, I'll let you guys know. For ropes, I've been using, this is the Mammut. I think it's called like the Alpine Sender. This is a triple rope. I think it's an 8.5. Yeah, I think it's 8.5. This is the thinnest single that you can get. I usually use this in a combination with this, the Eldred wrap line. Um, this is a six mil. So I'll usually, if it's just like one person that I'm climbing with, I'll climb with this one and then I'll get my follower to bring the tag line up and then we can wrap off that. These are both 70 meters. If there's two of us and it's a hard climb, I'll usually just bring two of these. And then I have like a mountain of half ropes uh, that are anywhere from 70 meters to like 50 meters because they've been core shot so many times. I think I have like eight ropes on the floor right here. So that's what I'm doing for ropes. The last thing that I'll show you guys is um, my fluid system. <laughs> okay, let's start, let's start with the beginning of the day. So basically I wake up whatever time, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, whatever time, okay? I go downstairs, first thing I do, make a pot of coffee. Second thing I do, I start boiling water. So um, this is just Stanley Master Series Thermos. I put my coffee in this, I drink it on the drive out. That is pretty straightforward. I drink it black like everyone should do. Don't ruin your coffee, drink a black. <laughs> this is uh, another Stanley thermos. I think this is like 700 mil, I think, maybe 750, I'm not sure. This is the source of all my strength, what little I have. <laughs> I make, uh, I got this recipe from Staz and I've been making it for a couple years now. This is a ginger lemon honey tea. So I usually cut up half a lemon, uh, peel it, cut it up, throw it in, and then I'll put a pile of ginger, throw it in, and then a big scoop of honey, throw it in, fill that with water, uh, fill it halfway, shake this, and then fill it all the way, put a lid on it, throw it in your backpack. When you get to the climb, like four hours after you made it, because you usually make it at like five in the morning, and then you get to climb at like nine or 10, this thing is awesome. Um, you have like two glasses or two little cups before you go, and then uh, two cups when you get back, back down from the climb. And this is basically what I drink throughout the day. I don't bring water, I just bring that. And then I recently started doing this, and this is awesome. This is just like an Eddie Bauer thermos. You can use any thermos. Um, I boil a ton of water. I get two Earl Grey tea bags, throw those in, uh, let it steep for like five to seven minutes, take the tea bags out, put a boatload of honey in that as well. And then I put a little bit like this much maybe of almond milk and I leave this in the car, and then when I get back to the car, it's like a hot, warm, delicious tea, honey. There's like cream, well not cream, almond milk. For me, you can put cream in it. You can put milk in it, you can do whatever you want actually. And, and this is awesome. Um, yeah, that's kind of my fluid system that I use. Other than that, that's basically my system. I mean, I have other things, like I have skis that I never use and I'd like to use more and a bunch of other things. And that's a Christmas hat. A Santa hat that we never actually used this year. But that's basically, in a nutshell, my system that I use for ice climbing. Um, I have different things here and there, but that's that's the framework, I should say. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, this is a different kind of video than I usually put on the channel, so let me know if you guys give a shit about this kind of content. I want to actually start making different content. So like one of the things, this Friday, we're gonna be building the cave out in my garage. One of the things I wanna start doing is like cave in sessions, trying to build new routes, trying to get my friends to build routes that I can't do, something like that. Um, that's gonna be a good one. Um, also at the gym that I go to called Ascension, I might want to do a couple videos there just cause it's always funny. Cause the guy who owns the, the gym, his name's Ian, and he just always runs you through the most grueling workouts that are possible. And it's just, of course, you guys love to watch me suffer, I think. So those videos are good. So I might want to do like, what I'm thinking would be cool for the channel is if I could still do uh, one video a week of ice climbing, rock climbing, alpine. And then another video would be uh, something like dry tooling in my cave or workouts at Ascension or Ascension is the gym or some kind of gear review if you guys want to see something. But yeah, I think that would be that would be awesome. That'd be lots of content. We could grow this channel. But other than that, 
thank you guys so much for for subscribing and for watching i appreciate all you guys and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one hit the subscribe shut the fuck up <laughs>